Hello everyone. Today I'm reviewing one of the most celebrated low price dive watches in the world. The Orient Ray 2. Official name FAA 02005D9. One of the most frequent comments one hears about this watch is that it seems to be worth far more than you actually have to pay for it. Millinery Watch Review described it as bringing the same level of joy as a Rolex Submariner. On retail sites, people frequently make comments like, easily equals watches costing thousands of dollars, and I've seen thousand dollar watches that were no better. Is this watch a freak of the market? A thousand dollar watch for a sub $200 price? What are the pros and cons? That coming up next. Upon taking this watch out of its great industrial looking box, one of the first things I thought to myself is, what a magnificent looking dial. Why didn't I buy this watch sooner? It really is striking with this depth of blue and burst sunray pattern with a cobalt blue. Really hard to photograph this watch for this video because the best angles to see the dial are angles that reflect back light so you'll kind of have to take my word for it that as great as this dial looks in the video, it looks even better in real life. Next, I noticed the hands and the dial markers. Crisp, clean, polished. They look really fantastic and everything and the bezel and the dial is perfectly aligned. I also noticed immediately that this is a weighty watch, which I like in stainless steel, coming in at about 160 grams. So it's got a nice hefty, chunky feel to it, which I really like in a dive watch. Now, before I go adoringly forward with this video, let's just get out of the way the two things everyone dislikes about this watch. First, the crown. The screw down crown is this wee little thing with smooth ridges that make it almost impossible to manipulate properly, especially with wet hands. It works, but it could be better by if either giving it a sharper coin edge or simply making it about one or two millimeters larger in size. The other common complaint is the bezel. The bezel is actually pretty good overall. It's 120 clicks, unidirectional with clear crisp numbers, a matte finish, and an angle that makes it perfect for wearing as a dress watch because the watch slips neatly under the sleeves of a dress shirt. The thing that annoys everyone is that the grip edges are rounded and the bezel is tight, making it difficult to manipulate. So to manipulate the crown, it's like any other dive watch. You give it an unscrew and it pops out with spring action. But you can see how tiny this is. Very hard to manipulate. Uh, you can wind it, uh, unlike the Seiko SKX. This is a windable uh, watch not just with the rotor uh, and then another click out to manipulate the hands so I mean it's functional it works but it's just so tiny I wish it were larger and everyone who reviews this watch says the same thing to get it screwed back in you really have to give it a really tight squeeze and with wet hands it's almost impossible Now for the bezel action here, I'll compare it to the Invicta Pro Diver, a watch I reviewed earlier. And you can see with this coin edge how easy it is to manipulate. Nice and smooth, not too loose, not too tight, good grip, easy. In comparison, on the Orient, it's much stiffer and smooth edges, very hard to manipulate. You kind of have to push down and turn in order to maneuver it properly. Even with dry hands, it's just not easy to manipulate. And everyone complains about this. I'm certainly not the first. Now here's what the bezel is like to manipulate with wet hands. Virtually impossible. 
it just slips even if you press i'm trying to get my thumb in there it's virtually impossible to move now you would think that after virtually every reviewer who has reviewed this watch complains about the crown and the bezel orient would just make the crown bigger and the bezel grippier but orient's always been a bit stubborn that way and they don't change things easily so it is what it is those are the two major complaints that everyone has about this watch. The case on this watch is 41.5 millimeter with a clean 13 millimeter height, which makes it perfect as a dress diver, especially with the bezel that kind of slants down at the edges. The case is made of beautiful brushed 316L marine grade stainless steel with a 200 meter water resistance. The crown guards are in the shape of a manta ray, from which the Ray 2 gets its nickname. The lugs nicely angled downward. If you've seen my video on large watches, you know that this goes a long way toward making this watch fit nicely on smaller wrists. So I'd say with this watch, you could go down to about a six and three quarter inch wrist and not have any problem with this watch looking great. The glass on this watch is mineral crystal, which does tend to scratch slightly more easily than say a hardlex or a sapphire, but it's also more durable and less likely to break. When I first got this watch, I wrote in my notes that I had a feeling that the angle of the aluminum bezel would make the bezel a scratch magnet. So I was prepared to have the bezel be wearable art after a while. But after wearing this watch for 20 days or so, I didn't have any noticeable scratches on the bezel, but the crystal was a whole different story. I've never seen anything quite like it. At the normal viewing angles, it looks fine. You can't really see anything. But if you look at it at an angle, at a particular angle under particular light, it's absolutely full of scratches. They're so small and so minute, you can't feel them with your fingernail, you, like I said, they're not visible under most conditions, but every once in a while you catch an angle and you think, wow, this is really soft crystal. So I don't know if I just got a bad one, if I got one that maybe wasn't tempered properly. In the reviews online, I looked at hundreds of reviews and I can't see anyone else complaining about this, but it certainly is very noticeable on this watch. In my Invicta Pro Diver, which is cheaper than this one, that watch i've thrown it around literally thrown it around i've stepped on it on the beach and it doesn't have any scratches at all and this one has many so that's a flaw i did not expect when i bought this watch the bracelet on this watch is pretty basic but i quite like it it's got this nice contrast of brushed and polished areas and it is made of marine grade stainless steel so quite nice that way on the clasp, it has the Orient logo. And the style of this watch, there's no diver's extension, by the way, but uh, on the, it's a fold over clasp. So you fold it over, click it in place, and then there's the safety clasp that goes over top. To release it, it's just the opposite. So you undo the safety clasp first, hit the double push button, and it opens up. So it's a nice, simple system, secure, uh, you know, no diver's extension, like I said, but it's basic and good and it works. Now it does have hollow end links, which some people don't like, but I'm okay with that. The lugs are a common 22 millimeter size. So if you do want to swap out the bracelet for something more memorable, there are thousands of choices in this size. And just on that point, this watch looks amazing with stainless steel mesh dark leather or carbon fiber. I have no intention of changing this bracelet. I just, I like the convenience of the double push button and it's comfortable enough. And the open end links don't bother me at all. They don't rattle or make any noise. They're quite secure. The dial and hands on this watch, as I mentioned earlier, I could talk about all day. Crisp, clean, nice looking, nicely polished dial markers and hands, really fantastic. And Orient, like Seiko, is famous for the quality of its loom, and this watch is no exception. 
the Luma's bright and long-lasting superluminova. The triangle on the second hands is quite small, so the loom on the second hands fades out relatively quickly compared to the rest of the dial. I'd love to see Orient make those rectangles, or those triangles, I should say, into rectangles, but I realize that's an aesthetic choice more than a necessity, and that's the way they made it. But I would like to see that either with a rectangle on the end, or like a Seiko with the lollipop on the opposite end. Now the other thing to discuss about this dial is the Orient logo. Some people love this logo and some people hate this logo. I personally love it. In fact, I would go so far as to say that this logo tells more of a story than any other watch brand in the market. As you know, or may know, in a period of about 60 years or so from late 1867 to about 1930, Japan completely reinvented itself from a medieval feudal society to a modern one. People alive at the time talk about how, in 1867, they'd see a samurai going by on horseback, wearing armor and carrying a sword and spear. 20 years later, now think about this, just 20 years later, everything Western was considered cool, and the same guy would be going by on a bicycle wearing a suit and hat. It was that dramatic. Now the epicenter of this change was a place in Tokyo called Ueno, which is where Shogoro Yoshida opened his watch shop in 1902, which through a roundabout way finally became the Orient Watch Company in 1951. To me, the Orient logo embodies all the character and action of this whole time. The Orient name, with a homage to the East, along with the Western-style coat of arms and everything that was popular about being westernized. It's really a fantastic logo. Now, on to the most important component of this watch, the movement. This watch contains the caliber F6922, an in-house movement made by Orient, 22 joules, 22,600 beats per hour, and a half-sector rotor. I'm a huge fan of in-house movement, so this is a big bonus for me over a micro brand watch. The movement is hackable, meaning you can stop the seconds hand to set it precisely, and it's hand winding in addition to being automatic, meaning you can wind it fully and then set the time, as opposed to a Seiko SKX, for example, where you have to wear it for 10 or 15 minutes to wind it before you can set the time accurately. It has a 40 hour power reserve and it does that job well. I love being able to wear another watch for a day and then switch back to this one without having to set the time again. Now this movement replaces the older 46943 movement, it replaced it in April 2016. The older movement being less accurate, having no hacking capability, and it had a quarter sector rotor which means it didn't wind the mainspring as fully as this one does. Now the accuracy of this watch is officially minus 15 to plus 25 seconds per day but as with most Japanese watches it under promises and over delivers but nonetheless the accuracy is one of the most common complaints about this watch and here's the probable reason according to Orient F6922 movements are regulated at assembly and are not inspected on a per watch basis prior to shipping in other words the movements regulated shipped out without any testing or break-in period. So if you wear this watch for a while, if you're lucky the watch will settle into a nice accuracy, and if you're unlucky, it won't. My watch was 30 to 40 seconds fast per day when I first started wearing it, but now that it's broken in, it's more accurate. Now here's the watch on the time grapher. Again, this is after wearing it for about 20 days or so, so it's broken in. And as you can see, it's running about 12 to 14 seconds per day fast, which is acceptable. It's got a zero beat error, excellent amplitude, so it's a nice well-running watch. Now again, because it indiv isn't individually tested, you may get slightly better than this, or you may get slightly worse, but from what I understand, this is about an average response. Now, I did regulate this watch just to show you what it's capable of. 
And as you can see here on the time grapher, I've got it to 0 to plus 1 seconds per day, excellent amplitude and no beat error. So it is capable of being very accurate and very little positional error as well, so excellent movement. Now I'm not going to show you how I regulated this watch because if you already own a time grapher, you already know how. And if you don't already own a time grapher, I don't recommend experimenting with this particular watch because it is a little finicky. Very, very tiny movements make a big difference. So it's not the first watch that you'll want to experiment on. You'll want to have someone else do it for you. One quirk about the F6922 movement and most low-end movements on that regard is the date and day change function. On very high-end watches, the day and date flip with a crisp click at midnight. But on these lower-end watches, it's different. So when I take out the crown here and set it to move the hands, as you can see, I'm on Friday the 16th. And at around 10 o'clock, that's when the date starts to move. You can see it changing from the 16th right at 10 o'clock. Now it keeps changing, and then at midnight, you'll see that crisp click to the new date. But the day hasn't changed. So if I keep moving the hand, still says Friday, starts to change at about 12.30 a.m. And then here's where it gets interesting. It flips to the alternative language, in this case French, on the ring underneath the dial. And then if you keep going, changes to the new date at about 10 to 3, uh, the new day, I should say, at about 10 to 3 on the dial. So little quirk, if you're traveling with this watch, it's going to have the wrong day of the week from midnight till about 3 a.m. There's one other complaint I saw online that I'd like to address, and that's the spring bars, the simple spring-loaded bars that hold the bracelet to the case. Some people have complained that the spring bars are weak and can bend or break when using the watch forcefully, whatever that means. I've never had any trouble or any issues with any watch with this. In fact, it seems like a rather odd complaint. But faulty spring bars are the most common reason across several online sites for giving this watch a one-star review. And the photos they show are of spring bars bent and mangled. I think what's happening here is people are buying this watch, which is a lower priced watch, and trying to replace or uh, resize the bracelet themselves without knowing what they're doing and damaging the spring bars. So believe it or not, some people are giving this watch a one star rating due to a part that literally costs four cents to replace. If you do have trouble with this part, do yourself a favor go to your watchmaker and spend eight or 10 cents for a new pair. So what's my conclusion about this watch? Is this a thousand dollar watch for less than $200? Well, the short answer is no, but it's not quite that simple. Function wise, such as the bracelet, the movement, the case, it's about on par for the price, maybe a little bit more. Looks and finishing wise, however, it certainly looks vastly more expensive than it is. If I wasn't familiar with the Orient name and didn't know this model, and someone said they just bought this watch for $500 or even $1,000, I'd totally believe the person and wouldn't give it a second thought. In fact, I didn't like this watch much for the first few weeks I had it. I kept looking at it and thinking, well, the hands are beautiful, but not quite as nice as an Omega Seamaster. The case finishing isn't quite as nice as a Rolex. This watch is so good looking that my mind automatically compared it to models that cost 50 times more. So once I realized that it's a sub $200 watch, I really started enjoying it. Now, the one thing that's the weakness is the glass. The scratch nature, scratchy nature of the mineral crystal will drive some people bonkers. So if that's you, you can buy a very similar model with the same movement the Orient Kamasu for about one third more. Personally, I don't like the, uh, the bezel on the Kamasu or the dial and hands as much. If you want something that's more similar, 
and also has closed end links in addition to the sapphire crystal, there's the Mako 2 USA for about $30 more than the Kamasu. Both the Kamasu and the Mako 2 are essentially the same watch as they have the same movement. Alternatively, if you like the round indices and the hands on the Ray 2 like I do, like it better than the other models, you can always buy the Ray 2 and mod it with a sapphire crystal. And in all three cases you're going to end up at about the same price point once you're all said and done. Just a few years ago, the Orient Ray 2 was compared over and over and over to the Seiko SKX-007 as a value proposition diver, with no clear winner between the two. Most people saying the SKX is better as a tool watch, and the Ray 2 as a dressy diver. But now that the SKX is discontinued and it keeps rising in price, to levels where it's the same price as the higher end models anyway, and the replacement Seiko 5 doesn't have a screw down crown, it seems to me that the Ray 2 is now the easy hands down winner in the marine grade steel category. Having said that, you could say that about the Mako 2 USA as well, and the Orient dive line in general. In the comments, I'll put links to both the Ray 2 and the Mako 2 for your ease of reference. And uh, just a note, there are many more videos to come, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Well, that's my review of the Orient Ray 2. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.